Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 196 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is one of the more popular fish that you might see um, in like uh, TV and things like that. It's definitely not a under or it's definitely a well-known fish. Let's put it that way. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is... Bam, the king mackerel. Now the king mackerel or scientific name Scombero, oh my goodness, sorry. Scomberomorus cavala. Again, that is Scomberomorus cavala. It is part of the family Scombridae, which is the family of tuna, mackerel, and bonito. Now we've known We've talked about, you know, tuna and, and bonito before on the channel, but mackerel was one of those deals that I realized I, I hadn't done a video on and felt it might be time. Um, now, the king mackerel is native to the subtropical regions of the Atlantic coast, um, basically along the Americas, Gulf of Mexico, very common from North Carolina to Brazil. And I did see some... People say that it was off the coast of India. I don't, I find that really hard to believe because I feel that that's more than likely a different species, but don't quote me 100% on that um, because I feel that the king mackerel is much more native to the Caribbean and American coastline of the Atlantic. Um, but it's definitely common along the uh, American coastline. Um, very, very common. They are a subtropical fish, so they're per preferring a little bit warmer water temperatures. They really prefer water temperatures between 20 and 29 degrees Celsius, which is about 68 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty, pretty warm, actually. And uh, what's interesting on that is that they're actually very migratory. Um, they migrate in with seasonal changes in the water temperature and with food availability. They, they're following their food. They migrate to the northern part of their range in the summer. Um, so as sort of the summer months cause the water to warm up, they will venture farther north. And then they'll go in the southern part in the winter going to their more um, the warmer waters. Keeping with that temperature sort of range that they like. And they swim in very, very large schools, actually, um, which is kind of bizarre when you consider that they are primarily a um, predatory fish. Not primarily, they are a predatory fish. And most predatory fish are actually fairly loners. Um, but, you know, that family, the Scombridae is a family of predatory fish that do school. And it's really, really interesting. Now, the king mackerel is, in my opinion, more found in the shallower water, more commonly found at depths of 12 to 45 meters, which is 40 to 150 feet. And that makes sense if you think about their temperature range. They're staying where the warmer waters are, where the sunlight can penetrate and actually warm the water. So you get down below 150 feet, you're going to start losing some of that thermal. Um, you're going to start getting below that thermal tolerance that they really, really like. But I would still consider this a pelagic fish, even at those depths. Um, they are found along the coastlines, but not necessarily on, on the coast in terms of the large schools. Um, the larger ones are more often inshore in the mouth of inlets or harbors. But the smaller ones that are really schooling, those seem to be a little more pelagic. And even the larger ones, they might be in the mouths of inlets or harbors, but I wouldn't exactly say that they're right on the shoreline. Not saying they won't be there, but I feel they're more associated with that pelagic sort of environment. Now, in terms of size, this is a medium to large fish. And I say that because there is a very large range. They're usually between five kilograms, which is 11 pounds, to 14 kilograms around 30 pounds that's your sort of average but they've been known to exceed 40 kilograms which is 90 pounds and that's sort of 
one of the interesting things about the size obviously king mackerel you associate with big but that to be an average of 15 to 30 ish pounds that 5 to 12 kilogram range and then for the size to get up to 40 kilograms and 90 pounds um actually says a few things and we'll get into that a little later on the video but i want you to keep that in mind in terms of length i saw everything from 60 to 183 centimeters which is 24 to 72 inches um big range this fish can range from essentially normal size to monstrous um, and something interesting no a lot of people would look at this picture and assume oh it has no scales it actually does it has extremely small and very loose scales very very small scales but it is actually a scaled fish it is not its skin um, it does have this spiny first dorsal but oftentimes if you see videos of these fish you won't see that dorsal because the dorsal fin and the pelvic fins actually fold into grooves um, and that actually just makes them very uh, hydrodynamic especially when you consider this very pointed head the fork dorsals you have these little finlets that are you would commonly associate with like tuna remember it is in the tuna family essentially this thing is built for efficiency I'm not saying speed although this fish is pretty speedy but this fish is efficient at swimming it does not expend a lot of energy swimming around in the ocean open ocean um and so that's how i'm associating this fish is efficient can be fast but it is efficient that's its goal in terms of coloration you're going to have this olive bluish green color along the back then it fades into this bright silver sides with this white belly and smaller ones are going to actually have these spots and you can see here this one's very spotted um, but if you get to something large you sort of lose that spotting and this one is almost a prime ex prime example of this green blue color going to a silver to a white belly um, but you can see the range this one obviously is a young one it's got these nets not a very wide mesh net this one i mean this lady caught this fish and kudos to her she's gotta be happy about this fish i know i would be very very happy but something you may have noticed is it has this really odd lateral line system you look at the lateral line on all these fish um this one is hard to see but like this one you can see it starts really high on the shoulder and is primarily flat until you get to the mid body then all of a sudden whoosh, it's not broken it just takes a massive dip and then towards the back you can see it here if you look closely it becomes wavy and then the bigger it gets the more it's wavy so it's no longer flat it's it's a pretty good diagnostic characteristic i don't know if other mackerel have that type of lateral line dip into a wavy but that's a very very good characteristic and it's it really just sticks with me now that I know that. Um, just really, really bizarre. Now, in terms of teeth, I'm sure you've been looking and I'm sure you saw here, but these are the teeth of the king ma mackerel. This thing is built to eat. This is a voracious predator. You can see these widely sort of spaced tooth. They are very conical. They're very pointed. They're recurved in and they they're made to eat things and what they eat makes sense with their teeth they are eating squid and sardine like fish but essentially they're eating whatever is smaller than them um, that they can swallow this is a voracious voracious predator but whenever you see these kind of thicker um shaped teeth like this you're obviously thinking predator and when you're there recurve they're meant to hold things they're not chewing teeth these are holding teeth that they're they they'll macerate their um prey and then sort of swallow it in the hole or in very very large chunks 
Um, but this is such a very large, um, such a voracious predator. In terms of reproduction, they're very sort of willy-nilly, I guess. Both the eggs and sperm are just shed into the sea, and their union is by chance. They are, like I said, they are more of a schooling fish, so I have to imagine they have some sort of spawning aggregation. But it's very loose aggregation, so it is very much by chance. And basically, the idea um, with them is... They're just going to deposit a lot. Uh, depending on the size, a female will shed anywhere from 50,000 to several millions. I saw three, four, five. One person said seven million eggs. Just a ton, ton of eggs. And that's sort of their strategy for reproduction is basically to say, hey, we're just going to blanket everything and hopefully they come together and make babies. But now for the interesting fact that we're gonna video on, I wanted you to think about this uh, picture here. This is a lady that caught a king mackerel. I am all for it. This lady, I wish I could catch a king mackerel like that. Um, and I do have it like this, so I don't show her face um, in, for respect of her privacy, even though she is online. But the thing about it is, is this fish is highly sought after. There is some commercial fisheries that go on for it, and there is a lot of sport fisheries going on it. And then there's the, your subsistence people that are fishing the, for this to fish to eat, which is supposed to be absolutely delicious to eat. But besides all that, and the fact of their size difference, and I wanna go back to the size difference. Usually, whenever I see a fish that the average range that is caught is somewhere between 5 and 14 kilograms or 11 to 30 pounds you know down there but the max sides the max sides is just incredibly different remember 30 pounds to 90 pounds um, some people say they get over 100 if that's your max size to me that says hey this is a long-lived fish and usually on long-lived fish, everyone you take out of the environment causes some sort of impact to the population. So even with all these fisheries and the fact that I have to imagine that these fish are relatively long-lived um, based on those size ranges, the interesting thing for me is they're stable. They're not endangered all the stocks and populations say that they are doing very well they're not declining and that's a good thing now it goes into some sort of the how they are fished for they are primar primarily done through hook and line which is definitely means that you can't just take out entire schools of them but they're heavily fished and it's really nice to know that there is some fish out there that are heavily, heavily fished and doing fine and able to rebound. Is it a long-term thing? Maybe, maybe not. But to me, that was very, very interesting and made me hopeful. You know, it's just, hey, people are, there. there's fish out there that are doing fine. Even fish that are heavily, heavily utilized. And that to me was just interesting because you don't always see that. You, we talk all the time about like, you know, bluefin tuna going, you know, being an extreme endangerment, uh, Chilean sea bass and things like that. And no, this fish is just doing fine. And that makes me so happy. Thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you do. I'd really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If you'd like to support the channel, please click the link down below. It is by no means expected, but very much appreciated. Regardless, take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones.